This is East Idaho Newsmakers with Nate Eaton. Thanks for being with us today. We are joined here in our studio by Josh Peters. He is a student attending BYU-Idaho who made a video this week that has been viewed several thousand times now. And by the time this airs, it will probably be even more. It's, a not, it's not a typical viral video that you would say of you doing tricks or skateboarding or something. It's a very personal video about your addiction to pornography. Uh, we'll show you a clip in a minute. We'll talk about the video, but first, let's go back to when you were 11. Is that when you were first introduced to porn? Yeah, yeah. I was 11 years old, sixth grade. Um, it really started out with surrounding myself with my friends. Uh, my friends, I, I grew up in Massachusetts, right? Lowell, Massachusetts, uh, public school. Uh, pornography at that age is a pretty normal thing. You know, it was. Everyone talked about it. Everyone uh, uh, kind of watched it. I mean, not everyone, but uh, particularly around my friends, they just started using vocabulary that, that I didn't know. Um, naturally, 11 years old, you get curious and you have the whole internet at your fingertips. And sadly, that's, that's kind of how it started. It was through my friends. It's kind of ironic, um, but yeah, that's just kind of how it ended up. So your friends started, as, as all teenage boys do, you know, you take an interest in girls or guys, depending on, on your preference, and, and you start Googling images, videos, things like that? Yeah, yeah, we, you know, the internet is so easy, and at that point, you know, I was 11 years old, so I wasn't like super computer savvy, but um, I remember I didn't even know what masturbation was before I looked up pornography, right? That was just sort of something that came along down the road, and and those two combined, and, and you know, I, I grew up in a religious setting, right? Um, those two combined uh, really just takes that addiction to the next level, and it's, it's the very beginning. A lot, not, not a lot of people think pornography is a bad thing, right? It's typically, uh, you know, in, in religious settings that uh, people look down upon it, but I've been um, researching a lot with Fight the New Drug. They're an organization that goes kind of into the science of it. They're non-religious, non-partisan, and they go into the science of the addiction, uh, how you can recover from it, and sort of the effects that it's having on society. So if you're watching and you think there's no way it's an addiction or whatever, you, you know, you can think that, you're free to think that, but for Josh it became very, a very real addiction over the years. Right? Yeah. So you start at 11, and I guess you were probably hiding it from your parents. I was hiding it from my parents for many years, right? And, and it starts at age 11, and then how often were you, were you, you know, going online and looking at, at these things? So, good question, right? I was addicted. Like, oh, I'm talking hours daily, right? Hours. I remember actually waking up, I don't think my parents know this, I remember waking up at like five in the morning and going downstairs and our computer was really loud, like the fans were really loud. I would put a blanket over the, over the computer tower to muffle the fan and I would watch porn. I was like 12 or 13. Mm -hmm. And I had a system down, I would clear my browsing history, I would, you, when mobile phones came out, my parents trusted me to have a mobile phone that was that made it a lot easier, uh, a lot more damaging, um, more free for me to use. So, man, I was a creative little bugger. <laughs> um, kind of sad to say, kind of hard to admit that, but I was creative and and I just had to I had to fuel it, you know. So, did your parents ever catch you or or talk to you about it? You know, there was. I remember one particular moment. Um, I was with my parents and they were, they wanted to like, we were talking about something, I can't remember what, but it led to the browsing history, right? And I remember my dad like, so innocently pulling up the browsing history and trying to find what we were trying to talk about. And I started to hyperventilate, literally. I started to get so nervous that I was breathing hard, I was sweating. I, I think I remember I got up and I started pacing and my mom was like, what's going on, <laughs> you know? and Because um, you were nervous they might find it. I was nervous that they were going to find it. And that was the first time they ever found out that I had a problem. And uh, I came forth 
at that time. I was like, hey, I have a problem. I think I was like 13. Mm. So what did, what did you do to address the problem at that age? At that age, my parents actually put me into counseling. Um, we went to a religious counselor, right? Uh, I met with uh, local religious leaders. I'm, I'm a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. So I began to involve myself and figure out, you know, ways to beat it. Um, and to be honest, I can, I can honestly say that that is why I beat it today. It was through my Heavenly Father and, and I, I believe in Jesus Christ as my Savior, you know. Uh, but at that age, I uh, went to counseling. Uh, I started educating myself. I've always known it was bad. I've always known that I was doing something that was damaging me and affecting my brain and affecting my relationships. How was it affecting your brain and your relationships? I don't quite have the memory of like what my thought process was, but over the years, the more that I've kind of understood myself and understood like how I should probably be thinking, uh, you know, I've had moments where I've looked at a lamp shaped in a, in, a, in a way that made me think sexually, you know? I've looked at inanimate objects and these thoughts come to my mind, you know? Never mind being with an actual, you know, female, someone that I'm attracted to, and thinking those thoughts as well. That's when I began to realize, like, man, I need to control this, you know? This is, this is affecting how I think, how I behave, how I speak. Uh, how I interact with my family members. Yeah. In your video, you, you portray that it seemed to escalate to, to, to violent sex scenes. Mm -hmm. it, did it start pretty innocent that, and then you needed to get more deep to fulfill your mm -hmm. desires or whatever? How, how did that work? So as far as the poem, I have taken quite a bit of creative liberty. Okay. Right? Um, Mostly that poem I made and I performed it in such a way to portray like that addiction at its deepest and darkest levels, I right? Um, I like to think I've always been a gentleman with the, with the women that I've dated and uh, there was never any violence or anything like that. Uh, but there were times of intense lust where my thoughts were going places that I should, that it shouldn't have gone, should never have gone there, you I know? See. And there, is, there, is a ten, there was a tendency and a temptation to go that route of violence. Um, and that's super personal, but it's a real thing. You know, people, a lot of people that, you know, kind of peruse pornography, you know, maybe they're not necessarily addicted or consume it very regularly. Not a lot of, not a lot of people realize that it could escalate to that. You mentioned the poem, you decided to, to share your experience in a poetry slam, a, a video, and, and take a look. This is just a clip of it that, that you posted. We won't show you the whole thing. You can click down below to watch the whole thing, but this is a piece. Tell me about the time you lost feeling in your fingers as well as the thoughts in your mind. The time your lips went numb and your mouth filled with bile. The time when your heart beat and beat so fast it turned like a tempest that never calmed. Ironic how symptoms of a porn addiction imitate and warp feelings of love. You see, a good amount say porn isn't a problem. A good amount can see themselves in a mirror and be content. But how can one truly see if you can't look past the cracks and into your eyes? The funny thing is that mirror cracked a long time ago for him. He was 11 years old when he chiseled into it, broke it, shattered it. 11 years old, that's a child, that's a kid. And every night for hours and hours, he found power in objectifying, glory in rape culture, pleasure in sexual violence, and apathy in true love. 11 years old and always alone. So you posted that online earlier this week. I would imagine sharing something so personal. Were you a little uh, apprehensive? What made you decide to share your story? Mm -hmm. So I've had this video for years. Right? I think it was around 18 when I really got a hold of this thing. Um, when I really started to beat it and started to stop acting out, stop perusing, stop consuming, right? Um, and I remember one night, sorry, to answer your question, not very apprehensive at all. I wasn't nervous at all sharing it. 
and, and, and I'll and tell you why. And you're, and you're pretty open here as well. Yeah. This is a topic that not a lot of people talk about. That's why we're doing the show because there's probably a lot of people watching that think, oh, I would never admit to that. Yeah, not a lot of people admit to it. And the reason why I wasn't so apprehensive is because this has been such a long process for me. This has literally been years in the planning, in the making, right? So backtrack three years ago, sitting there one night and I was just thinking how far I've come, you know? How much I've really beat this thing and I've understood it and it's helped me understand myself and understand my faith in God. And I wrote it in an hour. It was like two in the morning, I was on my phone, I was on the couch and in this deep flow state, I don't know what you wanna call it, I wrote it in an hour. And at first, I was probably like most people that have been struggling with it. Um, I didn't want to share it. This is personal, you know. This has been the last seven years of my life, you know. And I shared it with a couple of loved ones, like my girlfriend at the time and my family. Um, but I, I soon left after that time. I soon left for to serve a mission for my church, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints. And the more I grew to understand um, how being chaste can help build your faith in God and help uh, you know, keep those relationships safe and healthy, uh, help you with your family in the future. The more I began to realize that and, and really believe in that, the more I grew to realize, why am I hiding this passion? Why am I hiding these words uh, from people that could really be impacted by it? And the more I began to think, I didn't just wanna like perform it randomly you know, at different places, which I was doing, you know, and it was, it was really effective. But why not make a video? Why not make it really nice? Record it in a studio, um, get people to play certain roles, certain characters in the poem, and release it in a way that is meaningful and impactful. So that's what we did. And by the time we actually released it, I didn't even think twice about it. I was just like, man, this needs to get out there. <laughs> and, and, and it did get out there. So you weren't worried at all like, oh, what? What will my roommates think, or what will potential, you know, girls that I date? You're just laying it all out there. Yeah, the way I look at it, if someone's going to judge me um, or not think well of how I came forth and was super honest, I probably shouldn't be absolving myself around those types of people, you know. And uh, maybe they should change, right? Because I feel so strongly about this. What's been the feedback? Feedback has been phenomenal. I owe a lot to Anderton Films, right? Uh, his name's Coleman Anderton, our director. Uh, he's phenomenal. He, when I shared the video, I remember um, the first time I pitched it to him, he was, we were in a class together at Brigham Young University, Idaho, and uh, I had seen him at Walmart. And he recognized me, because I don't, I don't know why he just recognized me. He came up to me and he mentioned that he did video and I, and I pitched him this idea, I don't know why, it's just the thought just came to me randomly. Mm -hmm. I pitched him the video um, and I performed it for him for like, like a week later. And ever since then, we have been so excited about it. it if, once you watch the video, you'll notice that we did a lot. We were, the audio is, is different than in camera. We recorded it in a studio and we dubbed it over uh, when we filmed it. Uh, we got someone to act as my ex-girlfriend. Uh, we got someone to act as 11-year-old me and we uh, shattered mirrors in the video, we went to different locations. Um, uh, when we shot the video inside of a gym, we were up to like three in the morning shooting that. Wow. Uh, it was a hustle for sure. I owe a lot to how successful that video is to Coleman. Mm -hmm. Uh, he's one of my really good friends. I love that man. And what, what have, have you had any other guys come forward or girls that say, I, dude, this is my story. Mm -hmm. Like have, have people that have maybe not told anyone, but they're able to tell you because you've done this. Yeah, just last night, um, I had uh, probably about a dozen people reach out to me in some sort of a, I don't know, I don't know what you want to say, like a, like a confession kind of a way. But uh, with this type of addiction, it's so important to share the burden. Uh, the way I look at it, there's a lot of addictions out there that are kind of social. You know, maybe a. Drug addiction can be a little social, alcohol addiction can be a little social, but this type of addiction is very secretive. Um, it's riddled in, in lies and darkness, right? And uh, for, for you to come forth and share that with someone else, to come out of the darkness and share that burden, um, makes it so much more 
lighter on you. Why do so, you think it is? Because you, you're right. You say, you say I'm, I'm an alcoholic. Okay, we'll help you. Well, I'm a drug addict. All right, we'll help you. Why do you think it is that porn is kind of in the dark and no one wants to talk about it? And is that a cultural thing within you know, the LDS church mm -hmm. or religious groups altogether? That is a really good question. I've thought a lot about that, and I'm sure history plays into it, maybe how recent pornography is, like the, the actual medium. Uh, I mean, we've only had... TV for a little more than a hundred years, something like that, and and film and everything like that. Maybe maybe that plays into it. Um, maybe the fact that maybe this this addiction is a little bit more destructive. Uh, I I to be honest, I can't really answer that question very yeah. well. It does seem like that, but I, I would imagine you doing things like this can help so that people aren't so ashamed. Oh, so yeah. that, so that, and maybe in ten years, I, I can tell you that about twelve years ago, I, I was assigned to do a story on pornography addiction in Idaho Falls. I was working at Channel Three at the time, and I could not get a uh, porn addict to go on camera. Nobody would go on camera. I finally got a guy who agreed to let me use his voice if I disguised it and show his feet, his shoes. Mm -hmm. So the fact that here we are, you know, twelve years later, and you're here in a studio willingly. Telling, I, I think that there has been some advances, and maybe in ten years this won't even be a, mm -hmm. a, a an issue. There's there's people watching that, that are going through this. Mm -hmm. What's your message to them? One, I would say watch the video. Um, it comes from the heart. All the feeling, all the feelings that you feel when you watch it, uh, has have been what I felt. Right, feelings of despair, uh, sadness, feelings that that you're in this darkness and you, and you can't get out. A lot, of the, a lot of the video is very dark, you know, it's very, we set it up, we got the lighting that way to portray a very moody, uh, kind, of, kind of a dark feeling with flashbacks to happy times. Um, uh, there's this one part of the video um, where it jumps forward to when I was 16, in my first relationship, and the colors are warm, uh, the, the words are, are sweet and, and they, uh, they're caring, right? Because, man, at 16, puppy love, that, that hits hard, you know? That hits hard and, and, I, and I really loved her, you know, in, in that 16-year-old mindset. I don't know how much you can love someone at that age, but, but at that age, you know, I, I really did love her. And, and for me to kind of lose her through that, uh, there was a variety of factors why that relationship ended, but pornography did play a huge part in it. Uh, for that to go away, that hit me so hard. And I would say anyone that's struggling with it uh, should realize how it's impacting their relationships. Maybe they don't even have any relationships. Maybe they're not dating anyone because, um, because of how you know, picky they are. Maybe it's not being picky. Maybe that's a side effect of the problem that you have, you know, the problem that, that this sort of uh, addiction brings. Um, Realize how it's affecting your relationships. Let that really sink in and desire for something real, for something uh, loving, right? Because, I mean, this is actually Fight the New Drugs shirt. Uh, porn kills love. And if you can place love above porn, I think you're on the right track. Uh, going back to your question from before, um, yesterday I've had a woman reach out to me say, her husband um, started off with pornography, got into child pornography, got into soliciting child pornography, is now serving 10 years in federal prison. I've had another guy struggling with it his whole life, um, served the same mission that I did for the church, same devotion, same sort of religious uh, faith and fervor, um, and relapsed, right? um, relapsed really bad. And, as far as I can tell from our messages, I'm the only one he's reached out to in the last two years. Wow. You mentioned, so 13 you went to a counselor. You finally said you feel like you conquered it at 18. So there were obviously some relapses. Yeah. What was it at 18 that you said, done? Fun fact for you, it wasn't done. I've relapsed a couple times since then, even after my mission. Um, there really is never like a done for me. Well, as least. they say with alcoholics, once an alcoholic, always an alcoholic. Exactly, exactly. And I, I don't think this is any different. 
I think this is something I'm always going to be struggling with. And do you find those relapses happen during particular times in your life if you're stressed or whatever? Most definitely. Most definitely. Uh, when there's always like a deeper meaning behind a behavior, right? There's always a, some, some sort of event that hasn't been addressed in your life, something that you quite haven't understood. Um, I'm not a psychologist. I'm not, I haven't studied that or anything like that. I'm, but from, from my experience, I've always been going through something that just threw me off, that I wasn't doing very healthy things with my mind, and I relapsed, right? I went back to my old ways of finding comfort, but that comfort doesn't last. Fight the New Drug is holding a conference in Rexburg on the 10th, November 10th. Uh, for those people that don't know what Fight the New Drug is, what are they? So Fight the New Drug is a nonprofit organization. Uh, I think they're about five years old and they're based out in Salt Lake City. Uh, they're non-religious. Um, they really focus on uh, the addiction and the science of it. And uh, they also have place a huge focus on human trafficking, which um, you take pornography, that's like the worst case scenario that could probably happen. Mm -hmm. Is you become so addicted that you participate in the trafficking of of, of people, of children, right? Um, prostitution, that sort of stuff. Modern day slavery, slavery, really. Uh, and they fight that and they raise awareness of pornography addiction and, mm -hmm. and problems. And you're wearing their shirt uh, yep. and you've kind of been talking with them about maybe they might be yeah. using your video. Yeah, I've been emailing them back and forth. Uh, it's really up to them, up to their discretion. Uh, obviously my video is really intense. I've I've looked at their content, uh, it's kind of different than what I produced with Coleman. Um, but man, uh, their message has inspired. I, I made the poem before I knew about them. So naturally, when I found out about them, I was like, this is sick. This is so sick. This is awesome. Like, their message changed the conversation. Um, and what they mean by that, their, their little slogan there, uh, is just change how we talk about porn. Change how we talk about the addiction and recovering, you know? A lot of people, it's, it's taboo to talk, you mentioned this before, it's taboo to talk about this, right? It's not, a, it's not a normal thing to talk about, and the more we can bring it to light in a positive and uplifting way, the more those people that are really struggling with it, that really feel that they have a problem, they'll feel more comfortable um, with coming out and, and sharing that burden, like I said. And with, with what Fight the New Drug, their, their shirts, Porn Kills Love, these are meant to draw, draw up conversations, right? This is a conversation starter. Um, so making the video, um, by the time we, we started making the video, I already knew who they were. Mm -hmm. So it was pretty easy to kind of align our message with theirs. And the hope is that, you know, they, they catch on, they share the video, but honestly, we've been pleased with all the feedback that we've been getting. And, and uh, they've, already, they've already like, you know, cheered us on on our social medias and through email as well. It's just up to their content team what their direction, what their thing are. They're actually doing something called No Porn November. Mm -hmm. uh, it's their little campaign just for the month of November. Uh, one, to just start talking about it more, and two, to actually abstain from, por from pornography and see what sort of effect it has on your life. They have a, um, a three-part documentary coming out actually throughout that month highlighting pornography addiction. They've been working on it for years, apparently. I'm really excited to see it when it comes out. Oh, that should be interesting. Where do you go from here? I mean, do you, do you plan to uh, take this even further? It's a really good question. Um, to be honest, I haven't really thought about that. I've just been kind of like, man, let's get this video out there. Uh, let's share this. Uh, as far as activism for pornography addiction, I'm, all, I'm gonna be a lifetime advocate. Right? This is always something I'm gonna fight for and uh, um, I'm, I'm, an, I'm an available resource. I can speak, I can write, I can uh, produce content. Um, it's what I'm studying at school, so I'm always going to be of use. As far as like my affiliation with Fight the New Drug, I'm not officially affiliated with them, and maybe in the future I will. Um, I think that'd be fun. Uh, I'm always a. I originally wanted to study kind of nonprofit management, be a program director, but my. Uh, my passions kind of changed. I still got tons of schooling left, so I got plenty of time to decide. But for now, this is a fun video that we made. 
It's a fun thing. We're passionate about it. And we're also excited to make more videos in the future, slam poetry style about different topics. But for now, like this, this is what we got. So, What percentage, there's going to be parents watching, what percentage of teenagers, teenage boys, are looking at porn, do you think? Man, I don't know the specific statistics. I know there's been a lot. And I don't know how accurate those statistics yeah. would be. But, but in my experience, <laughs> I've asked a lot of people this because like, this is a huge thing. I've only met two males that I've brought the conversation up with that have never looked at porn in their lives. If you're a parent and you have a, like, a millennial-aged child or, or you know, the next generation, whatever they call it these days, um, you best be assured that they've been exposed to it. They may not be addicted, you know, don't assume that your child is, is addicted, but there's always that tendency. And in my belief, like, don't even consume it, you know? And that, that can be difficult. Even on Instagram, I'll go to the suggested page, and I'm shocked sometimes at some of the photos that are there that mm -hmm. I, I don't, you know, don't even follow that stuff. And, and there's yeah. pretty graphic. Instagram is, is definitely a trigger at times. I love Instagram for what it is and the positive things that it can provide, but I, I actually do a photography business on the side. I do weddings and stuff. Um, so naturally, some, there have been times in my life where I've justified following lots of models and, you know, in the art, in the, in the search for like inspiration and stuff. Not really, like you can find inspiration in lots of places. Um, why, why sacrifice that for, you know, the, the option or the temptation of relapsing again? So we're going to put the entire video down below this video box if you click there. If you're watching some other means, how can they find your video, Josh? Uh, you can add me on Facebook. Um, my name's Joshua Peters. Just look me up on there. Uh, I'm on YouTube. Um, just look me up. It, so if you look up Slam Poet Exposes Porn Addiction, it's going to pop up. That's the name of our video. Well, thank you for sharing your story. As I mentioned, this is a topic that not a lot of people want to address. Um, the people that, that believe it's wrong don't really you know, want to talk about it. And then there's the other side that say it's totally fine. And if, if you believe that, you, you can believe that. But obviously for Josh, it has, it has made an impact in his life. And he's trying to reach others who might be, be dealing with this. Uh, best of luck. We'll be excited to see where, how it all ends and, and where you take this. And, uh, there are resources available if you are struggling with a pornography addiction. We will include those down below. He mentioned the uh, porn kills drug, the fight the new drug. And fight the new drug, porn kills love. That's right. Fight the new drug, porn kills love. We'll put a link down below. And the conference is coming up on the 10th that you can uh, register for. All the best to you, Josh. Thank you for watching. Have a good week.